country. God is good all the time. And we got a bunch of stuff to lock up. <laughs> and I'm tired of a whole bunch of keys. And so what I did is I um, got to hunting around and found a outfit that has some little bit higher security locks. A little pricey, but I guess that's the price you pay for, I guess, quality. The reason I got these is because they're all key to like. They got these pack locks. This happens to be a UCS, that's Uniform Charlie Sierra dash 84 Alpha. I'm attempting to assemble that lock on this whiting handle. And the way that works is that this little bracket that they give you, again this is pack lock and a whiting handle. Bracket fits behind here behind the latch that actually goes underneath and hooks into this bar down below on the deck of the bed and that goes in just like so on the inside there's a piece of metal that slides in and then the key the key actually is removed at that point so you turn the key in you turn it a quarter turn clockwise and pull that post out and then that goes right on there like so but you have to do a little bit of prep work here. So right in here you have this carriage bolt that you have to remove. They give you a little bag of hardware to go and replace what you take out. So you're going to get two bolts, two nuts, two fender washers, and two lock washers. Now this, this little kit here did not come with instructions, so I'm kind of learning on the fly here. But it's self-explanatory after you study it a little bit. So obviously this, the carriage bolt has the square portion on the carriage bolt. These look like stainless as well, so that's kind of nice. They won't rust. And that will, that will drop in that square, you know, a square bolt in the square hole. That's always good. And then this, uh, this, tapered, this tapered bolt's going to go right in there, and it's going to be able to be flush with that surface. So what I've done here is I've marked the center of this carriage bolt that's adhering this plate to the door and I got a very small drill bit and I'm very gently going to tap a pilot hole into the center of that bolt or rivet or whatever that is I would say that's about a quarter maybe a quarter of an inch in that just gives me a guide for a larger bit to go in, so I'm going to graduate up to a little larger bit. This one here was a 564, by the way, if you're interested. Now I'm just going to go up to a 532nd. I'm going to go inside the truck and tighten this carriage bolt just tight enough to where I can just move this by hand but it'll stay in place. That way I can square and level this and, dr and drill this hole that I need to drill for that bolt. Okay, they gave you a nice big flat washer. And all this stuff looks like it's stainless so that's pretty nice. And we're going to have just enough clearance to get this 9 16 nut on the back side. If I'm careful, I won't have to go back out there because we've got the carriage bolt. The carriage bolt is going to hold on the other side. Okay, I don't have that really tight. Just tight enough so that I can move it on the other side by hand. Hey, Cody, what's going on, buddy? Did we do it okay? Okay, now I can move that around.
Okay, now I know where this is supposed to be. I can go ahead and drill this hole here out. Again, I'm going to drill a pilot hole to the center. It's a 5 16th bit. I was uh, start with a small bit just in case I was wrong, but uh, yeah, that looked like 5 16th. So here we go. I'll get that hole just a little bigger. And another fender washer. Another lock washer, split washer. Now it's time to see if my alignments are correct. Okay, there we go. What I like in particular about this is if you put a lock right here, can simply just cut this off and lift up the handle. With this particular type of lock, uh, you'd have to go about that a different way. <laughs> because no matter how much you cut on this handle, that hook is still down underneath the deck here. So I built this uh, hasp cover, made this uh, sliding door, or barn door a little more secure where people couldn't get in here and get it get around this lock with a hacksaw or something and I changed the other puck lock out for this puck lock that uh, pack lock has it's a step lock you can see back on the back side of it so this step portion will hang underneath the hasp that just shuts in like this this goes right over top and there you go so this particular puck lock if you're looking for one is uh, UCS-8 Alpha that's Uniform Charlie Sierra-8 Alpha now we're over here at the shipping container hell me and Cody are at the shipping container what's going on buddy huh want to say hi to everybody on the camera what's going on huh what are you doing? So these are these locks here fit nicely around these these type of uh, door latches. And this is uh, Uniform Charlie Sierra Dash Eight Two Alpha. And this is a mono lock type. This is Uniform Charlie Sierra Dash One Seven Alpha Dash Eight Five Zero. That just slips up underneath that cover and right over top of this heavy duty. That's made out of half inch steel and that slips right up in there. And there's no getting in there short of having a cut set of cutting torches. This is what the other half of that looks like. So the lock will be inside here like this. So as you can see, this is also a whiting handle, but it's different. So what I have to do is I have to modify this a little bit. I have to bring this out because this handle here comes out further away from the door than the one on the back side of the truck. So I have to build a little bit of a standoff for this bracket to fit around this lock. So there's three eighths of an inch that I have to build this out in order to bring this out to where the handle will be able to fit on this plate because this whiting handle actually is as out protrudes further out than the one on the back does. So again, this lock right here, if this was secure, that's all fine and good. But somebody could, I mean, it's a pretty good quality lock, but somebody could cut this off. This type of lock here is more secure 
or an added protection uh, to what we have going on right now. We'll take all this hardware over to in, inside of the uh, shop there. I have a, a 3 8 inch thick piece of uh, aluminum plate here. So what I've done is I've traced the base of the bracket onto this 3, 3 8 inch plate aluminum. And what I'll do first is I will drill these holes. I have a lot of material here, so I don't even have to use clamps to clamp this down or anything. I could just go ahead and drill these out. But before we get started, I wanted to show you the hardware that they give, give us. It's actually really good stuff. It's uh, stainless steel, but I won't be able to use these because now they're going to be 3 8 of an inch too short. So I'll have to go to the store and find two more bolts this size. I may have this one here at the shop, but this one here is a specialty bolt. It's tapered and uh, that, that will fit right in here for clearance for the lock to set in there. So this is going to be a carriage bolt. And this will be that uh, tapered bolt that will fit right in here. So I'll have to get a little bit longer, 3 8 of an inch longer carriage bolt. And then I'll have to get a 3 8 of an inch longer tapered bolt like this one to uh, accommodate the extra width that we have to penetrate in order to make it through the door. So we don't have power out here at the property. So what I'm going to do is uh, fire up the generator welder. So I have a nice sharp brand new metal blade on the jigsaw. So I'm not getting too scientific, you know, with a set of calipers to uh, check to see the width of this drill bit. I, what I do is I can just go along and put the drill bit right in front of the threads on the bolt. And if I can't see the threads, then I know that this is wide enough. That's just a poor man's way of doing it. Or you can take an adjustable wrench, close it on the drill bit, and then see if your bolt will fit on there. So that's gonna be pretty close. If this uh, drill bit's too small, well then I can just go up a size. So we're gonna go ahead and use a battery operated drill. And I don't have a center punch out here at the property, so what I'll do is I'll just use this nail that's aluminum, it's soft enough. And we'll double check to see if our hole is the correct size. It can afford to be a one size larger, so we can just go up a size. Okay, that'll work beautifully. And I forgot to tell you, there's also another little trick you can do if you can get the bolt in, is to find out which, like I to say, this is a 3 8 inch bolt. You can kind of get a good idea by sizing it up this way. And then you can see if it'll fit in the hole. And it does, there's lots of slop in there. I mean, it's not, a, it's not perfect, but uh, It'll, it'll give you an idea. I'm pretty sure that's a 3 8 inch bolt, but I'll start with a 20, 23 64. It fits a little more snug in the hole for the 23 64 bit, but uh, I'll go ahead and use this first. So yes, we have a 3 8 inch bit, but Remember, you can always go up a size, but it's hard to get going back down the other way. Drilling a pilot hole is a good idea anyways, uh, even smaller than what we've done here. Uh, just work up from there, but this way you're guaranteed or uh, a little more insurance that you're not going to uh, make your hole too big too soon. So we can work up to that size hole and then check it with the carriage bolt. It's a little bit better insurance to make sure you're not going to make a mistake. That should do it. There we go. Before I cut this out, I'll verify the uh, everything centers. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now that we have the holes drilled, now we can cut up our cut out our shape.
let's go see how it looks on the handle and door so okay i don't want any of this to be touching the door handle when it's in the shut position i don't want any binding nothing touching in anywhere in there nothing touching on the bottom line up my holes okay that looks really good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a line reference lines around the standoff and then i'll remove this bracket now we can mark center for our bracket holes i know somebody's going to scream at me and say oh, that's not center that's not center well when i get done that will be center so i'll take a hole punch and i'll hit those two guys and then i'll drill them out and we'll be ready to fast fasten the lock to the handle I'm going to go ahead and use a pilot bit. Okay, that pilot bit just means a smaller bit than what we're going to end up using in the end. My batteries are run down on my old 18 volt DeWalt uh, drill, so here I am uh, lying on the generator again. I just found out that that's not going to work. So when this latches in, that there's a cam that runs this way. So this particular lock set will not work on this after making all this, you know, spending, oh, probably an hour and a half maybe making that. So this handle on the inside, there's that, there's a hook that runs around inside this, behind this plate and hooks into the uh the truck the base of the truck here uh the frame of the door so when i roll this back you can see the hook that's inside there or part of that plate rolls around now i can't i can't use this type of lock on here so anyway that's a pretty handy lock system uh for all the locks that i've showed you now you know this particular whiting handle won't work with this type of setup not unless there's something i'm missing that you know somebody can show me i'm not sure if i can go higher up on the handle move this over build this out a little bit more i'm just not sure if you guys know of any way of solving this issue uh, i'm open to ideas not everything that we do here it works out all the time <laughs> you get you get to see firsthand that this didn't work I think the idea is sound if, you know, as long as I had a handle that didn't have that cam that ran up in there, uh, I thought I had to figure it out. But anyway, thanks for stopping by. Take care and God bless.